When it comes to developing your youth players in Football Manager 21, what's the best way to do it? Do we do it in-house or use the loan system? In today's video, we're going to try and find out the answer to that very question. Hello everybody, welcome back to the FM Network. I'm Frankly FM 84 and today I am back with another guest creator video. But before we jump on into the video today, don't forget to check out my channel which is in the description below. Check out one of my long running series, I've got two of them going at the moment. I also do player profiles and if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, it would help my channel so much. On the subject of subscribing to channels, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for the FM Network so you can stay up to date with all the videos that come out around tips, tricks and tactics and you'll never miss out. Okay, so on to today's video. For a while now, I've been pondering the question of what you should do with players under the age of 23. Is it best for you to keep them in-house and develop them slowly through your developmental squads, using your own staff and resources to work them into the first team gradually and maybe try to maximise potential that way? Or is it best to send them out on loan and benefit from other teams, first teams to gain valuable experience that you can't give them straight away? In today's video, I'm going to try and answer this question using one simple experiment. One player, two different paths. Let's find out what happens. Here we go then. The subject of today's video is going to be Louis Barry. He is a player who starts off in Aston Villa's under-23 squad. He needs no introduction as he was part of the Aston Villa youth team that played Liverpool in the FA Cup when in real life the Covid outbreak happened at Aston Villa. He is a player that starts the game with a minus 75 PA, puts him in the 120 to 150 ability range, which is just short of the wonder kids that you would see on certain lists. But he does have a peak ability of 135. And in this video, we're going to use two different methods to try and get him to that peak range as quickly as we can. So the first run through, we're going to be sending him out to various lower league clubs, try and use their first teams to develop him into the player that we need to come back to Aston Villa and break into the first team. And the second run through, we're going to develop him ourselves, where we keep him at club, put him gradually into the first team and build up his playing time to see which of the two methods will get him to that peak of 135 fastest. We have loaded up a brand new save and we have landed at Aston Villa's homepage. The first thing that we are going to do is drop into the development centre to have a look at how Aston Villa rate Louis Barry as a player. And you can see that they think he's a first team candidate who has the potential to go into their first team pretty soon. Looking at the development advice that is coming from Craig Shakespeare, who's already at the club, they say that he could become a star player and potentially better than Wesley. So if we look at Wesley, we can see what Aston Villa think he is about to become. Wesley is a player who is rated at 128 for current ability, already has Premier League experience, and this is the benchmark that Villa think Louis Barry can become. So I guess the conundrum for us is how do we get Louis Barry to that mark of 128 and beyond as quickly as possible. So in this version, we're going to send Louis Barry out on loan. So the first thing we're going to do is go and offer him to some clubs. So from the offer clubs page, we're going to lock in that we want him to be a regular starter wherever he goes. There's no point sending a player out on loan if he's just going to go and sit on their bench. We could just do that ourselves and watch him develop at the club whilst not playing first team football. The whole point of sending him to another club is for him to get that experience of being in a first team and around first team players. So we've locked in that we want him to be a regular starter and we are going to send that offer out to the clubs and see what comes in for him. So a few days have passed and Aston Villa have now received some interesting loan offers for Louis Barry. We have some National League clubs and some League Two clubs and I guess that the trick here is to try and weigh up the pros and cons of each of the club to find out where the best fit would be to try and extract that potential ability out of Louis Barry. So we're going to have a little look at the clubs and look at their youth setups and their training setups to see if the quality is sufficient enough for us to progress Louis Barry using the loan systems. So the first club that we're going to look at is Forest Green. They have a two and a half star average training facility and a one-star basic youth facility. There is Wrexham who have a three-star training facility and a two-star youth facility. Stockport County 
have a three star good training facility and a one star basic youth facility. There is Scunthorpe United who have a three star training facility which is good and a youth facility that is one and a half stars but below average. There is Exeter United who come in with an adequate for both training facilities and youth facilities and there is Barrow who come in with a one and a half star below average training facility and a half star youth facility. So I guess here it is just a case of weighing up which of the clubs is going to be the one to send Louis Barry to and trying to factor in where he would best fit in. So we, ideally we'd want a League 2 club. We don't want to be sending him to the conference for his first season as a first team player. And I think the best fit for him would probably be Scunthorpe United. They have a decent enough youth facility and they also have a good training facility. And I think that they are the ones that will offer him the best chance of developing as a youth player quite quickly. The deal has now been completed and has all gone through and Louis Barry is on his way to be a Scunthorpe United player for the season. The last thing to do is to just give him a parting comment to tell him that we are going to pick. I've made the decision to loan you out so you can continue your development. Depending on how that progresses, we'll reevaluate your position in the squad on your return. To which Louis Barry seems quite receptive to that. And it says, your attempt to convince Barry appeared to be well received. The conversation appeared to have a positive effect on Barry's morale. And the chat seems to have helped build a bit of a relationship between you and Barry, which is going to be good for the future. So I guess what we're going to do now is jump into our time ship, move one year forward and see how Barry's loan move to Scunthorpe United is going to influence his career as we work out whether it's a good move or a bad move in terms of developing under 23 players. After one year away from Aston Villa, Louis Barry is back after a successful loan move to Scunthorpe United. If we look at his profile page, you can see that his current ability is up to 103, which is an increase of 9. Looking at his stats, his vision, his concentration, his balance and his strength have all improved. If we go and look at his seasonal stats, you can see that he had a successful loan, as I said played 38 games, he scored 22 goals, three of which were penalties. He had four assists with eight player of the matches and an overall season rating of 7.07 .07 and a league rating of 7.10, which is fantastic in aiding his development as a young player. When we look in depth at his overall progression, his attribute changes since the start, you can see that there are arrows everywhere that are going up. And in terms of his overall improvement, he has a slight improvement in technical abilities, slight overall improvement in mental abilities, and a slight overall improvement in physical abilities. If we go on and compare him to the benchmark that Villa had set, which was Wesley, you can see that Wesley is a current ability player of 123, which means that Barry is 20 current ability points behind him. But if we compare him to another Villa striker, which is Keenan Davis, who has been a Premier League player for a couple of seasons now. Keenan Davis has a current ability of 113, which means that Barry is only 10 behind him. However, if we look at Ollie Watkins, who is another of Villa's forwards, he is a 140 current ability player. So Louis Barry has a lot of development to go to get to that kind of standard. However, I think that that might be achievable. And I think that even though he's supposed to be capped at 135, I think with the right guidance and the right club selection, we can get him a lot closer to that 140 mark and far surpass both Wesley and Keenan Davis whilst doing so. The next thing to do is send Louis Barry back out on loan from Aston Villa. And in the second season, we want him to step up a level and we are looking for a League One club. And luckily, Aston Villa got three options from League One clubs. So let's have a little look at them. We've got Burton Albion, MK Dons and Forest Green. And when we look at the facilities that all three have, you can see that Burton Albion have got a five-star state-of-the-art training facility and a five-star state-of-the-art youth facility. The MK Dons have a two-and-a-half-star average training facility and youth facility. And Forest Green still have a two-and-a-half average training facility and a one-star basic youth setup so this one's a pretty easy pick you can see that Burton Albion are streets ahead 
of both of the other clubs. So Louis Barry for the second season is going to be shipped out to Burton Albion. So the deal is done and Louis Barry is sent on his way to Burton Albion. I think this is going to be a really big season for him. Those state-of-the-art facilities that they have for both the training complex and the youth facilities really should help Louis Barry blossom as a footballer. Also, a step up into League One should hopefully help too. So what we are going to do is jump back in our time machine, hop forward another season and come back when Louis Barry is back at Aston Villa in July of 2022. It's now July the 1st, 2022, and Louis Barry is back at Aston Villa after another season out on loan, this time with Burton Albion. You can see straight away that his current ability has taken a massive leap from 103 to 122 as he really has progressed whilst playing for Burton Albion. Those state-of-the-art facilities really must have helped with his development. Stepping up into League One also has helped him to mature as a footballer. You can see the development all over his um, player profile page here. He's got green arrows practically everywhere and he's turning into a more mature footballer at the age of 19. If we have a look at his season stats whilst he was at Burton Albion, he played a grand total of 40 games, scoring 17 goals with four penalties, one assist, seven player of the matches and a season rating of 6.78, which is not spectacular, and a league rating of 6.79. If we have a look at his overall progression, there is some major improvement in all areas as a player. You can see that he has had a major overall improvement in technical ability, major overall improvement in mental ability and a major overall improvement in physical abilities there are some decent jumps there his anticipation and his decisions balance stamina and strength are all improving as he plays a better standard of football if we compare him to wesley who was the benchmark set by aston villa you can see that he's now only one current ability behind wesley he has really progressed as a footballer and has caught Wesley up in quite a short space of time. For the third season, we are again offering Louis Barry out on loan to try and get that next step in his development. We are hopefully going to attract the attention of a championship club. We are also going to specify that we want him to be an important player, so he's going to maximise his game time. We send the offer out and the only team to come back with an offer is Huddersfield Town. So if we have a quick look at Huddersfield Town's profile, you can see that they have a three-star good training facility and a three-and-a-half-star great youth training facility, which means that it's a no-brainer to send him there as it will aid him in stepping up to the championship to see how he performs at a higher level than before. And also, Huddersfield have the equipment in place to bring out the next level in that potential that we are looking to maximise. A few days pass and Louis Barry agrees terms to go to Huddersfield to the next stage of his development is going to happen in the championship. What we are going to do is time travel forwards to the end of the next season and see how he develops with a season of championship football under his belt. The day is now the 1st of July 2023, which means that Louis Barry has successfully completed his season on loan at Huddersfield. He's back at Aston Villa. and We're going to have a little look at his player profile to see what has happened in the past season. You, the first thing that you might notice is his current ability is now up to 129. He's developed quite nicely playing championship football. He has various stat increases as well, such as free kick taking, long shots, penalty taking, acceleration and stamina. He also has corners, but that's not important for a forward. If we go and look at how he actually played in the championship, you can see that he had 32 appearances in the first team. He scored 10 goals with six assists, two player of the match, and had an overall rating of 7.17. That is much better than what he did for Burton Albion in League One. So his progression as a player is coming along nicely. If we have a look at his overall stats across his entire career, you can see he's now got a major overall improvement in his technical abilities, major overall improvement in his mental abilities, and a major overall improvement in his physical abilities. When we compare him to Wesley, which was Aston Villa's benchmark of where they thought the player could end up being, you can see that he has now overtaken Wesley, as Wesley is a player with his current ability of 1-2-3. Louis Barry now is a 1-2-9 player, so he should integrate nicely into the Aston Villa first team for the next season. If we move along and have a look at Ollie Watkins as the next benchmark, 
Ollie Watkins is now a player who's rated at 138. So Louis Barry has a little bit of potential to grow to get to where Ollie Watkins is. But considering the seven-year age difference between the two players, we think that that will be able to bridge that gap. And I think we can get closer to this 138, despite his peak being at 135, according to the game. So what we're going to do for the next season is put him on up into the first team squad. We're going to set his playing time as important player. So he will start the majority of games and he will get the development that he needs in the first team. The other thing that we are going to set up is a mentoring group through the training tab. We are going to add a group, which is for Louis Barry himself. We're then going to put him in that mentoring group with players such as Noah Katabach, who is a professional personality. The other players to round out the mentoring group will be Tyro Mings and John McGinn. Both of those are team leaders within Aston Villa and they both have resolute personalities, which should, according to the game, have a significant estimated effect on Louis Barry. So with his mentoring group set up, his playing time adjusted to being a first team player at Aston Villa. We are going to jump forwards to the end of the next season and see how his development with Aston Villa comes along. Can we get him to that 135 peak that we're looking for and maybe even to the Ollie Watkins level of 138? Or are we going to fall short and maybe we should have sent him out on loan for a fourth season? Let's move forward and find out. So the date is now the 1st of July 2024 and Louis Barry has successfully completed his first season of first team football at the highest level of English football. You can see that his current ability has now jumped up to a 133 score. And even though the stats on this page don't look overly impressive, he has 13 for anticipation as his only up green arrow. It's when we move across to the seasonal stats that you'll see the biggest improvement. In his first season playing in the Premier League, he played in all 38 games and managed to score 33 goals with two assists, eight player of the match awards and a 7.16 rating. Across the entire season as a whole, he played 52 games, scoring 45 goals, three assists, eight player of the match awards and an overall season rating of 7.16. When we go across and have a look at his all-time attribute increases, you can see there are some big jumps in areas like free kick taking and penalty taking. He also has anticipation, decisions and vision are all improving and his physicals are really becoming rounded as well with him being a quick dynamic player and his strength has improved to allow him to adapt to the Premier League way of playing. When we break each of those categories down, you can see he's had a major overall improvement in technical ability, major overall improvement in mental ability, and a major overall improvement in physical ability. When you go and compare him to Wesley now, which was the benchmark that Aston Villa had set for him, you can see that his current ability is now far greater than Wesley's. So Louis Barry should be ahead of Wesley in the pecking order. But when we compare him to Ollie Watkins, Ollie Watkins looks like a player who's actually in decline. He's come down to a 136 current ability, and Louis Barry is now up to a 133 ability. So the gap between these two players really shouldn't be that great. And Aston Villa, if they use Louis Barry correctly, should be able to get that current ability rating above Ollie Watkins, and Louis Barry will probably become the more dependable player there. And if we have a little look at the mentoring groups that we set up, so Louis Barry started off as not a very influential player. He is now a highly influential player. He's a fairly determined personality. And the group, instead of being significant in terms of its outcome, is now only average when you look at the estimated effect from the group. After the first run through using the loan system, you could see that we were able to develop Louis Barry using other clubs from a 94 CA player to a 133 CA player. So the question really there is what would have happened had we have kept Louis Barry at Aston Villa all along? There's only one way to find out. We're going to run the test again. And this time we are going to try and bring him through the developmental stages at Aston Villa, put him in the under 23s, break him into the first team gently before trying to put him in as an important player and seeing what would happen. Let's have a look at the outcome of the second run of this test. We have now reset the game for the second run through of this test and you can see that Louis Barry is back to his original current ability 94 player profile. The first thing that we are going to do as we are looking to develop him in-house at the club this time around is set up his mentoring group that we had last time. So 
For the purposes of this video, we are going to be using Jack Grealish and Tyrone Mings, who are current club captain and vice captain, and John McGinn, who is a highly influential, resolute personality player. Louis Barry is in that group, and you can see that he has a light influence on the group, but will have a significant benefit from being in the group. So, what we are also going to do for his first season is move him into the first team from the under 23s and set his playing time to that of an impact sub, which means that Villa can just bring him on at the end of games and see how he develops in that first season. So, jumping forward to 2021, and you can see that that impact sub and mentoring group role has really brought him on as a player. In the other run through of the game, where he had been out on loan, he came back after the first season as a 103 rated player. In this version, where he has been trained in house, he is now a current ability of 116. And although some of his stats are on the decline a little bit, and his free kick taking is the only one that has gone up for some reason, you can see that he really has benefited from being in and around the first team and he's developing as a player really nicely. If we look at his overall stats for this first season, he managed to play 27 Premier League games, all of them from the bench, so Villa did use him as that impact sub only. However, if you look at the column above, you can see that in non-competitive games for the under-23s, he actually played 39 games and scored 38 goals, achieving a 7.42 rating, which shows that his development in both the under-23s and the first team has aided him to get to that 116 current ability. If we look at his overall attributes, changing for the first season he has major overall improvement in his technicals he has slight overall improvement in his mentors and major overall improvement in his physical ability so if we compare him to the player that Villa were comparing him to at the start of the save which is Wesley you can see that Wesley is a current ability 124 player in this version Louis Barry is now at 116 so he has quite quickly bridged that gap and he will be looking to take Wesley's place in the team in the future. So when we move forwards, we are going to step up his role and see if he can't catch him quite quickly. Comparing him to Ollie Watkins, Ollie Watkins is a 139 rated player. So we still have quite a way to go in his development to get to him. But as I alluded to in the first run through, there is a seven year age gap. So whereas Ollie Watkins is probably the more finished article, Louis Barry is still playing catch up in terms of his development. So before we move on forwards into the next season, what we are going to do is up his playing time again within the first team. So this time around, he's going to be set as a squad player. So we'll see what Aston Villa will do with him. It's more than likely he's going to be a starter in the Cups and a substitute in the league. And when we jump forwards, we'll be able to see how they go about distributing his playing time around the first team squad. We also now look at his mentoring group. You can see that he is part of the other players in the hierarchy. He's in the secondary social group and his influence on the group is still light, but his estimated effect from the group is still significant. Okay, so another jump forward in time to 2022 this time shows that Louis Barry is now really coming on leaps and bounds as a footballer while staying at the club. And being in and around the first team and his mentoring group. His current ability is already up to 127 after just two seasons of being in and around the first team. And those stats that were on the decline in the first season are now all starting to rise back up with crossing, free kick taking, heading, penalty taking, technique, anticipation, concentration, decisions, teamwork, pace and strength all developing as he matures as a footballer. If we look at his seasonal stats, for the second season, you can see that this time around he played in eight first team games as a starter, eight games as a substitute. He managed to score four Premier League goals with an average rating of 6.72. Overall in the season, he played 16 first team games with those four goals and he made 40 appearances for the under 23, scoring another 31 goals, an impressive 7.34 average rating there. When we look at his stats again, they are now starting to really shoot up. You can see he has a major overall improvement in his technical abilities, a major overall improvement in his mental abilities, and a major overall improvement in his physical abilities. If we compare him to Wesley again, Wesley is now a player who is current ability of 124, which means that Louis Barry has now already overtaken him after two seasons of in house development. Wesley is a player who is probably going to lose his place to Louis Barry quite quickly in the upcoming season as Barry develops and Wesley probably declines. And it means that when we start looking ahead, Ollie Watkins is still the player to be comparing him to. 
Ollie Watkins is now a 139 rated player. Louis Barry is going to be hot on his tail as he's pushing for development and pushing for more and more game time in Aston Villa's first team squad. Another look at the mentoring group that Louis Barry is part of shows that the team leaders in the team are having a positive influence. And even though his influence on the group is still light, his effect from the group is still significant. And this is really showing as he is maturing as a footballer at Aston Villa. So with the change in playing time has come another leap in development as we push another year into Louis Barry's career at Aston Villa. And everything now in-house for the training seems to be indicating that it is working far better than sending players out on loan. You can see that he's already a 134 current ability player. His stats are still stable. They're not really increasing anymore. But you can see that he is now an important player within the Aston Villa squad. And when we look at his stats for his seasonal attributes, you can see he played a full season of 38 games for Aston Villa this time around, scoring 20 goals with four assists and two player and matches. He has an average rating of 6.9, which means that when you look across the three seasons, he is improving season on season. And that's the only thing that you can really wish for when you are developing under 23 players if you have a little look at the bottom section though he actually did play another 39 games for the under 23s and also scored 43 goals for them so if you had to add those together he scored 63 goals in a season playing for both the first team and the under 23s which is just an amazing goal scoring record i know the under 23s isn't a good barometer because of the players he's playing against and how quickly he's developing but it still shows that he can still improve playing for both the under 23s and the first team when we go across and look at his all-time stats and how they are growing you can see that there are still more major overall improvement in his technical abilities more overall improvement in his mental abilities and a major overall improvement in his physical abilities some of these now starting to jump quite quickly He's got some fours threes and a five for his penalty taking in the technicals his mentals are all jumping up quite rapidly as well and all of his physicals are starting to develop at a really good rate also when looking at his mentoring group you can see he has now become an influential player at aston villa he's in the secondary social group still but he has become an ambitious player at the age of 20 and his estimated influence on the group is still light, but now the effect from the group is only light as well. So maybe that mentoring group has took him as far as they can, and he has fully become integrated into the first team of the Aston Villa. So the only player to really compare him to now is Ollie Watkins, as he has already far surpassed Wesley's current ability. And it seems like Aston Villa may have actually underestimated Louis Barry at the start of the save. You can see that Watkins is a 139 player and Louis Barry is already at 134. And with the seven year age gap between them, it does seem that Louis Barry, on the curve that he's at, could actually overtake Ollie Watkins and take his place in the first team squad pretty quickly. So let's jump on to season four and see exactly whether that happens or not, and whether Louis Barry does develop past Ollie Watkins as a player. We have now jumped forward to the fourth season, and you can see it's 2024, and Louis Barry has developed into quite the player. So by using the in-house training, we have managed to get him past his peak of 135 to 139, and he is now an important player for Aston Villa, a bona fide first team starter and he is better at this point of his career than Ollie Watkins was. So if we go and look at his fourth season stats across the Premier League campaign, he started all 38 games, he scored 18 goals, he had five assists with four player in the match and got a 6.88 rating, which isn't actually as good as I would have hoped. It's a slight drop off from the last season with him having a more important role. But also Villa are still playing in in the under 23s which is quite bizarre where he has played 29 games and scored 31 goals there so across the entire season he really has developed as a footballer and he's now a core player in Aston Villa's plans going forward you can see that from his all-time stat changes he has now major overall improvement in his ability everywhere in terms of his technicals his mentors and his physicals there are some big jumps still with some fours fives there's a six in there for his penalty taking now. His physicals have all developed really well. He's a stronger player, quicker player. His acceleration is 17, so he'll frighten defences when he gets in behind. And when we compare him to Ollie Watkins, who is the only player left at the club to compare him to, Ollie Watkins has actually started to decline, so he's now a 137 player. Louis Barry is now a 139 player. So we have managed to successfully train Louis Barry 
past Ollie Watkins and now he's the starter at the club within his first four seasons. And so after running both tests successfully, let's have a little breakdown of what happened across the four seasons in each of the saves. So in the lone save, Louis Barry went to 103 in season one. He went to 122 in season two, 129 in season three before finishing season four with 133 current ability. Whereas when we developed him in club at Aston Villa, he started off by going to 116 after the first season, 127 at the end of the second season, 134 by the end of the third, and he rounded out with 139 and surpassing his peak potential ability at Aston Villa. So I think we can conclude that when it comes to this test, training your players in-house is probably the way to go. It's tempting to get the player out on loan and get the first team experience. However, within your club, you have the players to put the mentoring groups together. You have the first team to aim the player towards, build through the development. And I think it will be beneficial to get your players into your first team with your own club and your own facilities. That's a wrap then for today's video. A bit of a long one, but I really wanted to try and get across the methods that I was using to loan the players out and also develop them in-house at the club. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button both here on the FM Network and over at my channel. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, leave them in the box down below. And both myself or the FM Network will try and get back to as many of you as we can. Big thanks once again to the FM Network for having me back as a guest creator. And until the next one, thank you very much for watching.